Hi everyone, this is Peter Harris from Commercial Property Advisors, uh, coach and mentor to many commercial real estate investors all across America, and co-author of this book as well, uh, Commercial Real Estate Investing for Dummies. The subject and title of today's video is Apartment Investing for Beginners. So let's get started. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over five things. And first of all, I'm going to do why starting out with apartments is a good thing if you are a beginner. Number two, the seven things to look out for if you're just starting out. And number three, the three areas that most beginning uh, apartment investors go wrong in. Very valuable there. Number four, I'm going to break down for you my very first apartment deal from the top to the bottom. And lastly, I'm going to give you an action plan on getting started yourself if you are a beginning apartment investor. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, number one, why starting off in apartments if you are a beginner is a good thing. First of all, demand. And ever since I've been born, there's just been a huge demand for apartments all across this country. And we, we expect that to continue. There's a researcher by the name of J. Thomas Black, and he's done some research on this demographic segment called Echo Boomers. Look it up. Echo Boomers are children of baby boomers. Basically, they are the ages between 18 and 34, and they will propel this, this uh, demand for apartments until uh, at least 2020. What his research says is, uh, in the early 2000s, uh, there were about 66 million of these echo boomers around between ages 18 and 34. And by the year 2020, right, they expect to, for that amount to increase by 7 million uh, renters, 7 million more people that uh, age range. And they will live in apartments. And there's no way that uh, home builders and apartment builders can keep up with that number of people. All right, so demand will be uh, increasing for, the, for some time being. Next is availability. Just drive around your town and you will see uh, there are more apartment buildings than there are office buildings, industrial centers, uh, shopping malls. So just the sheer number of apartments that are available is a good thing if you are a beginning apartment investors. There's plenty of them. Next is the ability to understand. All right, the apartment business is relatively easy to understand. It's not that complex, but let me share with you why it's not. Um, if you compare an apartment building to an office building or a shopping center, an office building and shopping center, you have to deal with complex leases that are, you know, for the apartment business, leases are one or two pages long. In, in an office building, it can be 20 pages long at least. It's full of complex language. You need to have an attorney go over it. There's um, uh, lease escalations. There's common area maintenance uh, items to deal with. There's plenty to deal with. That's not something I would recommend to a beginning uh, commercial real estate investor. That's why the ability to understand apartments is uh, much easier compared to the office building or shopping center. And lastly, um, loans. Loans are readily available for the person who wants to borrow money from a bank to buy his or her first apartment building. And the reason why is lenders love apartment lending. And the reason why they love it is because the income stream is steady and is consistent. So in the eyes of a bank, the, to lend money to a borrower for, uh, to purchase an apartment building is a safe investment for them. Okay, all right, so next we're gonna talk about seven things to look for uh, when uh, you're, you're buying an apartment building as a beginning investor. We'll go there next. Okay, number two, the seven things to look for if you are a beginning investor, okay? Seven things to look out for and watch out for. Number one is I want you to have a goal, to have an investment objective. Why are you buying this apartment building? Is it to purchase with the hopes of living off the cash flow? Is it uh, buying with the purpose of retirement? Is it for a tax shelter? Is it all three? Regardless, have a goal when you are embarking on a journey of buying your, your apartment building. 
Okay. Number two, area and location. And you know uh, the saying, uh, location, location, location. Well, I can tell you it, the area location is extremely important because there's an old saying in our, in our business that says that you can fix a property, but you can't fix a location. You see, if a location is declining, that property comes with it a certain stigma that's negative. The tenants will begin to move out, and so should you. All right, so the number one thing I look for when I'm looking at an area location is I will look for jobs. How's the job market there? If there are no jobs, there are no tenants, you move on. It's that simple. Now, there are two ways to quickly find out uh, what the job market is like. Number one is to call a local property management company and speak to uh, a person there who does the actual renting. Now, the reason why you go to a local property manager is because they are on the front lines of the rental market. They know why people are moving out or moving in. So they know all the trends. So you simply ask them, uh, how is the um, job market? Is it steady or is it declining? They will tell you straight up. All right. The second thing I want you to do to find out about jobs in the area is to go to your city's chamber of commerce. There inside the, city ch the, the city's chamber of commerce is a department called the Economic Development uh, Department. Find its director and ask him the same question. And whatever answer he gives you, ask him to back it up with data. Okay, so there are two ways to qualify in area and location. All right, all right, next is the property. So basically, you want to know what's the property's condition. You want to know what you're walking into. I want you to look at uh, two things there. I want you to look at the, the exterior. Look at the roof. Look at the siding. Look at the painting. Look at the balconies. Okay, look at the landscape. Get a feel for how it is. When you go inside, look at the, um, look at the, if it needs a, uh, a, a kitchen or a, a bathroom remodel. Uh, look at the electrical, look at the plumbing, just real quick looks and see if it's something that uh, can be, um, that doesn't need major rehab. If it's a small rehab, that's okay. But if it's major rehab, that's something as a beginning investor, I do not recommend you do. All right. As a beginning investor, you're just uh, starting to learn and you have a lot to be concerned with when you're first starting out. Uh, so you don't want to do major rehab. After uh, a few purchases and some experience, go for it. Rehab is a, rehabbing apartments is a great business. It's very lucrative. But when you're first starting out, I recommend not doing major rehab. Too risky. All right, number four, the numbers. All right, very important here. Here's what I want you to do. Very simple, very simple. All right, over the last 12 months, did the property's income exceed the property's expenses? That's all you need to find out at this point, all right? I said 12 months, not one month, not two, not three, but 12 months, all right? 12 months of data. Now, I want you to get the numbers in writing. Do not use the broker's brochure or the broker's performa. We'll talk about that a little later, all right? That's highly inaccurate material, all right? We'll, we'll get to that later. All right, number five, management strategy, okay? Again, these are seven things to look for when investing in apartments. You need to have a management strategy. This is where, after closing, this is where people make it or where they fail. Right here, having a management strategy. All right? So the questions are simple. Are you planning on managing yourself or do you plan on hiring a management company? I recommend, if you're a beginner, uh, start off by hiring an accredited and licensed property management company. Do that first. Again, this is by far the most important thing you're going to do after your closing. All right? Have a management strategy. Number six, exit strategy. Again, I don't know why people, or most investors, don't think about exit strategies. They're very important. Uh, all the smart and successful investors I know, uh, they have more than one exit strategy. All right? In fact, you should have an extra exit strategy uh, before you close during your ownership, and when you sell the property. I'm talking multiple extra strategies. Now, some of the extra strategies um, are, are simple. They could be holding long-term. It could be flipping, even though that's not what we're into. 
It could be to refinance with the lower rate and increase the cash flow, or it could be a refinance uh, cash out, okay? All of the above. All right, so that's just uh, uh, a couple of the uh, extra strategies to consider. All right, but you need to have one going in. It's the smart thing to do. Number seven, I want you to ask yourself some tough questions, all right? The reason why I got into commercial real estate and including the apartment business is because it's less emotional. There's more logic to it, there's more strategy to it. So when you're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, take out the emotions, all right? There's a saying that says, uh, follow, do, do not fall in love with the property, but fall in love with the deal. And that's what I want you to do here when you go over one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay? All right. So <clears throat> the next thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about the three areas most beginning investors go wrong. The three areas most beginning investors go wrong. This is compiled from mentoring and coaching um, commercial estate investors, apartment investors for over, for over a decade. Number one, uh, the, the first uh, area where they go wrong most of the times is they tend to believe their property financials in the brochures. Let me explain. You find a property online, you call the broker, he sends you over a beautiful brochure with beautiful pictures. Second page has some fantastic finan property financials and the cash flow is excellent. You want the property. Well, let me tell you, this is where a lot of beginners go wrong because you should not believe the property financials in the brochure. Most case, those financials are what we call pro forma or per forma, meaning that they are best case, uh, uh, you know, best world scenarios, not the actuals. In fact, if, you, if it says uh, uh, the actual numbers in the brochure, it still isn't uh, the actuals, I'm sorry, all right? What you need to get from the broker are the uh, uh, certified from the seller the last 12 months financials from their property management company, okay? Do not trust or believe what's in their broker's brochure. Ask for the financials directly from uh, the seller. If not, you could possibly overpay for the property and be in big trouble, okay? All right, again, this is where most beginning investors go wrong. Number two is they tend to underestimate their property's expenses. All right, for beginning investors, the most, uh, uh, the, the biggest thing they underestimate and they wonder why they're not cash flowing the first year is because they underestimate what it takes to run the property for 12 months. All right, what they do, they tend to believe again in the uh, brochures in the pro forma or they even um, forget to realize that uh, the property needs to have a savings. Let's, let me say this. Uh, a property is like a, it's like a body, all right? And the body wears out after a while and it has to be maintained. Same thing with the property. So if you buy a property day one, it looks beautiful. In year five, it needs a new paint job. And a paint job could cost tens of thousands of dollars. And if you don't have that money saved up, you could um, lose um, vacancy, lose income, and the cash flow will dwindle. Okay, so do not underestimate the property expenses. This is where beginner investors go wrong. So what I want you to do is to get uh, expert advice from a mentor, from someone who's been there and done that. In fact, let me give you a rule of thumb that we use in the industry. Let's say you find an apartment building that's over 100 units. Our rule of thumb is the expenses should equal 50% of the income, all right? In brochures, it may say 35, 40%. It is not. So after you operate the property for a year, you will see that it actually took 50%. Okay? All right. That's why you should uh, really study this business. Don't believe um, the property financials. And please do not underestimate, it, w underestimate what it takes to run the property for 12 months. Get some help. Okay. The third thing that most beginning investors go wrong in is property management oversight, all right? They hire a management company, and after a few months, uh, the property is, is, is run down. That happens more often than not, all right? So what I want you to do is, I want you to uh, have a certain mindset. I'm gonna use my suitcase metaphor as the proper mindset, 
okay, that you should have when hiring and managing a property management company. Here it goes. All right, let's say that you have a steel suitcase full of $100,001 bills and you're carrying it around all day. Okay, you have the steel suitcase, it's a big suitcase. Inside, it, inside of it is $100,001 bills. So quite a bit of money, all right? And you're holding on to it to make sure it's quite safe, all right? But all of a sudden you get busy and you need to have someone look over your suitcase, all right? So how much diligence would you check out the person that's gonna manage and watch over your suitcase? You make sure that they're capable, that they have integrity, that they're intelligent, that they really know what they're doing, all right? Because you do not want to lose track of what's in this suitcase, all right? So you need to have the same mentality when you go out and hire your property manager, okay? All right, now um, I gave you the three areas. I have a bonus area, all right? The bonus area is most beginning investors go wrong in trying to find the perfect deal. I'm sorry, but the perfect deal does not exist. All right, does not exist, sorry. So what I want you to do is to be smart, start small, get started, start practicing. And, and after you practice, you can do larger and larger and larger deals. Don't look for the perfect deal to get into. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to break down my very first apartment deal. I'm gonna break down for you my very first apartment deal. All right. Um, so how I got started uh, first, if you recall my previous story, was I was initially uh, buying single family homes, built up a nice portfolio, uh, and then I discovered the uh, wonders of apartment business and I shot right in. Now what I did to buy this apartment building was I sold uh, two single family homes and used those profits to buy this apartment building. <clears throat> now it was 45 units. And uh, again, it, I went through 70 deals, 70, 70 deals over two months to find this deal. All right, so perhaps it may take a little less, but that's about the right time it takes to find uh, your first deal, two or three, maybe even four months to find your first deal. All right, okay, um, so again, 45 units. The location was next to a major uh, university with the medical school. And um, uh, fortunately, I didn't want uh, students as my tenants. Uh, so it was on a, on a corridor where a lot of the university workers and upper grad students lived. So most of my uh, residents and tenants were either university workers or grad students, which is a good thing. All right, um, th uh, they were asking uh, $775,000 after about uh, uh, two weeks of uh, negotiating, um, I end up with the purchase price of $720,000. All right, um, how it was financed. Oh boy, let me tell you this. Um, back then when I bought this property, there weren't a lot of out-of-state uh, uh, borrowers or a lot, a lot of out-of-state acquisitions. I was one of the forerunners to that. What that means is it was very hard for me to find a loan. All right, I went through uh, national banks, small banks, local banks. I got denied with all of them. All right, so uh, last just effort, the last three banks, um, I put on my nice suit. I went into the president's office, sat down with him, and explained to him why he should uh, approve a loan for me. After the third try, they called me to the office, and they approved me. So persistence in a nice suit pays off, okay, in this business. All right, um, so the financing was decent. I put down 20%, all right. Um, I get a decent rate, 6%, uh, 20-year uh, amortization. Um, you'll learn about that a little later, all right. Now, one thing that I um, do in a lot of my transactions is uh, cash back. Let me explain what this is. So what I did was I had this property under contract for um, 720, right. And what I did was I found a lot of flaws in the property, all right, that equaled about $50,000. And, you know, I just got maybe three uh, contractors give me quotes, $50,000 worth of stuff to do on the property. In actuality, it was about $20,000 $20, to get it done. But I, in my negotiations, I presented uh, um, $50,000 of stuff to get done. 
and he decided to give me credit for $40,000 of that. Now, here's the key. Instead of asking for credit, I ask for cash back. Okay? There's a difference. Credit means they're going to reduce your down payment. Cash back means I get a check at closing for that amount. So that's what I did. In fact, I, have, I keep a copy of the check because it was my first transaction. I was very proud of it. Uh, you can see here, I'm not sure if you can see it here. It says Peter Harris and it says um, 45000 I set 40 here, but I forgot it was actually $45,000 uh, cash back from the seller. So I got this uh, after closing. Okay, um, let's see, cash flow. Um, the cash flow on my two single family homes that I, that I um, sold combined, they were producing about twelve to $1,400 a month. When I sold them and I, and I got into my new apartment building, 45 units, the cash flow jumped up to $6,500 a month. I was on the rat race at that point. All right, so that's the breakdown of my first deal. Uh, I'll never forget it. It was what catapulted me uh, to where I am today. All right, so next I am going to give you an action plan on getting started if you are a beginning investor. Okay, last but not least, I want to give you an action plan on getting started investing in apartments if you're a beginner. Okay, so let's get started. Number one is I want you to get educated. This is the theoretical part, okay? You need to gather theory. Okay, engross yourself in apartment investing books, uh, buy my commercial book, um, read articles, educate yourself as much as you can, read like there's no tomorrow. So absorb as much as you can, okay? Again, this is the, this is the theory part, okay? The next what I want you to do is something practical, okay? We have theory, practical. I want you to go out and find a friendly uh, real estate broker who sells apartments. Okay, I do not want you to go out and find a residential real estate agent who happens to know about apartments. I want you to find a real estate agent or broker who specializes in apartments. Then after that, what I want you to do is I want you to nurture that relationship by calling them, by speaking with them, by uh, telling them that you're new to the business, but you're interested in getting into it. Be nice to them. Here's the goal. Here's the goal. You want to get on their A plus, their A plus uh, list where they send you listings. But here's the ultimate goal. You want them, uh, when, when, the Monday, when Monday morning comes along and they get that, they receive a, a, a pocket listing. A pocket listing is a, is a listing for a property that will not go out to the public. Okay? When they receive that pocket listing from this uh, property seller, you want them to think of you first. All right, so they will call you and say, hey, Joe or Joan, hey, I have this great uh, 40 unit apartment complex. It's uh, in-house, it's a pocket listing. I'm, not, I'm gonna uh, try to sell to you first. Let me know if you're interested. That's what you want. That's where the best deals are. Now, those only come about if you are on his A+, if he likes to do business with you. So just remember that the apartment business is a relationship business. So build relationships is priceless. Okay, next is something else that's practical. I want you to start visiting apartments that are for sale. Okay, there is nothing like having a, the property brochure in one hand with all the property details and information and having the property in front of you. Okay, believe me, it is better than any seminar that you will go to. Okay, so again, having the brochure there and then having the property in front of you walking around and making sense out of what's on here as to seeing it visually, it compares to nothing else. Okay, so that's number three, to so start visiting apartments that are for sale. Number four, I want you to get your financing in order. And here's what I mean by that. You may have the 25, the 20 to 25% down payment. You may not have it, okay? You may have to do something uh, creative. Uh, half of our closings are creative, okay? 50% are with uh, commissional banks, 50% are creative, all right? What I want you to do and to be is be intentional on getting your finances in order. Is it going to be, do you have the cash available? Do you not? Is it going to be creative? Those, those three don't matter. I want you to be intentional by committing yourself to either direction, okay? 
All right. Number five is uh, once you decide on an, an area you like to invest in, I want you to go in and create a relationship with the local property manager. Okay. The, uh, the expertise that they can give you is incredible. All right. Remember, you are the beginner. They are the experts. Okay. They can tell you things like what rents are going to be, what vacancies are going to be, uh, what part of the year are the heating bills the most, uh, um, all these mark, other market information and resident profile things that you need to know to become an expert in this business. They have the expertise. You need to go out and create their relationships, those relationships. Here's, here's the other bonus they, that, will do, that will work for you if you can create this relationship. They will go out um, and do a drive-by inspection for you. So let's say you find a property you really like, you're really busy, it's on the other side of town. You can call the person you're, you have a relationship with and they will actually go out and drive by the property for you and give you a thumbs up or thumbs down. That's priceless. Okay. The second thing they can do for you is they can do on-site inspections for you. Let's say that you get a property under contract or you can do a walkthrough. They will go with you and walk through the property for you for free. Drive by is for free and the actual walkthroughs for free. What they want from you is your business. Okay? And they want your business because you established a relationship with them and they can see that you are the real deal. Okay? All right. Number six is I want you to get your mindset right. Okay? In this business, um, you can do anything you set your mind to. Okay? Everything's possible for you. The most uh, wealthy, the most successful apartment owners in this country start it where you are. Okay? They had a, their belief system says, I can do it, even though they had nothing. Okay? Same thing with you. If you have nothing, you can get to where they are. First of all, you have to believe. You have to have the right mindset. Okay? Lastly is, I do not want you to give up. Okay? This is part of your action plan is not to give up. Persistence, persistence, persistence. Okay? So building a financial fortress and in, in, uh, investing in apartments, it takes years. It's going to take you several months to find your first deal. All right? So to build a financial fortress investing in apartments, it starts with one brick at a time. Okay? And it'll be well worth it if you do so. Okay? So stick with it. All right? And don't give up. All right, um, that was um, the action plan. I, I always have a next in my video. And the next is, I just want to share a quote with you. This is Mark Twain's quote. Okay, it's fitting for this video. It says, the secret to getting ahead is, okay, let me repeat that. The secret to getting ahead is getting started. That's the secret. You have to get started. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed um, this video on apartment investing for beginners. If you want more resources like this, more videos like this, go into my website, Commercial Property Advisors, or simply um, join this uh, YouTube channel. Okay, this is Peter Harris from Commercial Property Advisors. I'll see you later at the next video.